Hello! Today I'm going to show you how to make some real rubies in your garage uh, or in your home shop in a real easy and very cheap manner. And this actually produces real rubies like this. I'll show you a close up if you can't see this. And these are not um, crystalline or monocrystalline rubies like the gemstones you, kn you know but um, they are amorphous polycrystalline uh, rubies so they aren't of gem quality but they really look nice and they actually fluoresce pretty beautifully and they actually are made of um, some surprisingly available materials rubies are actually um, corundum materials so just like sapphires they, they actually are sapphires but a subclass of sapphires and corundum actually is um, just aluminum oxide, so it's Al2O3. And um, the impurity that dictates red or pinkish color in rubies is chromium oxide. So for making the rubies, you actually don't need a lot of tools. You just need um, a scale, maybe a pocket scale like this that um, is accurate enough for these measurements we're going to make. And you will need a NARC welder. So these are the only tools you basically need. And um, an arc welder actually, I don't know, very cheap arc welders cost like 50 bucks and they're really useful if you, you know, want to weld. But you, you can actually use them to make these rubies. Actually, another YouTuber called Nighthawk and Light uh, showed a way uh, how to do this in a microwave. But, um, well, you would need to buy your microwave for this because you wouldn't use, you wouldn't want to use your food microwave for this kind of chemistry stuff. Um, and of course you could use a hydrogen oxygen torch if you have this. Um, but you know that's probably a bit more expensive and a, bit, a little bit more dangerous than a cheap arc welder. Now another quick note, I actually didn't come up with this myself. I watched you know YouTube videos by Nighthawk and Light and Elemental Maker who um, showed how to do this. So I'll link these videos in the description if you want to, to see them. And after seeing these videos, I actually tried this myself and didn't actually, and wasn't actually successful on the first try. So I thought that I might make a video on this uh, showing what I did wrong. So um, some of you might not make these uh, mistakes in the future. All right, so in order to make the base material for the rubies, we are going to need some aluminium oxide crystals and some chrome oxide. Now it is absolutely critical that the aluminium oxide is really, really pure. I've tried some normal sunblasting media from Amazon and they claim that it's pure aluminium oxide, but it actually did not work at all. Like the, the rubies didn't uh, fluoresce at all and they didn't have any color to them. And then I bought some stuff from a mineral online shop and they claimed that it was 99.99% uh, aluminum oxide and that actually didn't work as well. And then I remembered that the elemental maker um, actually talked about some aluminum oxide crystals for dermic abrasion for skincare. So I tried this and this actually works. Um, if you're in doubt whether your stuff is actually pure, aluminium oxide powder should be white. Very very white as you can see here. And the stuff I had before was actually grey. So it needs to be white um, in order to be sure that it's actually pure. So as you can see this is, I don't know whether the brand actually is important. This is some neat crystals, microdermabrasion crystals, skincare boost, booster, and yeah, this is just some aluminium oxide as you can see. All right, so we need uh, about 95 to 99.5% of this stuff. And to weigh this out, I actually use this kind of pocket scale that your friendly neighborhood DIY pharmacists might also use. So I just um, put this on here. I'll just frame this so you can actually see the scale. So it's reading 0, 0.0 there, that's fine. And I always make uh, 10 gram batches. 
Now, I can actually make this using a kitchen scale, but because the kitchen scale is so um, inaccurate, like it measures to, I don't know, about a gram or two grams. So uh, with the kitchen scale, you might need to uh, make um, batches of 100 or 200 grams to actually get a quite accurate um, proportion of the material. And I got this from, from Amazon for about 15 bucks, so no big deal. All right, so I'm going to make a mixture of 99.5% aluminum oxide. And in my, my opinion, this makes the most beautiful rubies, the most brightest rubies. So they are a very, very bright pink. And the more chrome oxide is in there, the darker the ruby gets. That's it for the aluminum oxide. And then for the chrome oxide, I use this green chrome oxide. Again, I'm not sure whether the brand actually matters. Well, you can't actually see the brand here. Um, but this is, let me just focus there, some chromium-3 oxide. And this is, uh, I don't know why this is sold so widely available. I think it's for, what does it here? Say it here. Mineral powder pigments. So for paints, I guess? I don't know. And I would, I would um, suggest using different spoons for the, the different minerals so you don't contaminate the containers. Oh, sorry, my camera crashed there. So you can see I've got the got 10 grams now exactly. And there's some chromium oxide. And now another important part of this is to actually mix this thoroughly. So I'll give it a really good mix. I'll do this for, I don't know, two, three minutes. All right, just a little footnote. This is the stuff I was talking about. This is the sand blasting media and it's sold as aluminum oxide. So you can see this very similar consistency of the uh, really pure stuff. Oh, it flows nice, or relatively nice. Um, but it is very gray, and so it, it isn't really pure. And this is the stuff I bought from the mineral store. Oh, quite cheap, but uh, you know, the guy at the Store told me that it's 99.99% pure, and I think I got scammed a little bit there. So just uh, to compare, this is the really pure stuff. As you can see, very, very bright uh, white, and it flows really nice. Okay, so I'll have to, I don't know, throw this out or use this for sand blasting. Okay, here we are after mixing this, and maybe you can see this a little bit. The pure white powder has turned into a slight green, and of course the more chromium oxide you put in this stuff, the darker the green gets. And this is now ready for smelting. Alright, here we are at the welding spot, and here's my setup. I've got a graphite disc. It doesn't really matter whether it's a disc or a plate, a square, it's really not important. It just needs to be graphite. Um, you could of course use a crucible for this, a small crucible. And I've got the negative electrode of the arc welder hooked on this graphite. And I've actually got a, um, I think it's 16 millimeter, it doesn't really matter, just a, just a small hole in there. So that uh, when you direct the arc onto the powder, the powder doesn't just um, fly anywhere. I mean, it, it still does, but it's it's better than just using a, a flat plate. All right, so we can just put some of the powder we just made in here. Come on. There it is. Okay, and for the positive electrode, I've got a graphite rod like this. And this is, I think, 80, uh, 8 millimeters. And I've actually um, I used a file to just file a tip onto this. It's, that isn't really necessary, but it, I feel like this uh, helps me to direct the arc a little bit better. Uh, but as, as I said, it's, it's not strictly, it's strictly necessary. So this is uh, 
10, 10 centimeters in length and 8 millimeters in uh, diameter. Okay, so I use my stinger, also the, the positive electrode grip, and just carefully put this in here. Right, and um, yeah, that fits pretty well. And then I just melt this yeah, using the, the arc. And that's, that's basically it. All right, I'll just turn on my arc welder, and then I'll see you. Okay, so I've got the welder turned on. It's at 80 amps. I don't know whether this really matters, but I think the higher the amp is, the amperage is, the more violent the arc is, and that may result in more bubbles. All right, let's try this. I'll try to position myself so you can actually see. Right. So I haven't looked at the camera, so I'll bet that you didn't see anything, just a white screen. And I'll try to um, refilm this uh, with a lens in front of the camera, but I know, don't know whether this actually will work. All right. So as you can see, this actually spews the powder anywhere, everywhere. So uh, it's it's quite messy. But let's wait until this is cooled down then you can actually take a look. Okay, so I don't know whether you can actually see this on camera, but this is a pretty pink stone, and a very surefire way to actually see whether this is a ruby is to use a UV light and shine this. And as you can see, this fluoresces really strongly. Like, it's, it's really strong. So this definitely is a ruby. Alright, these are the rubies we made, and as you can see, they fluoresce pretty well. Uh, I don't know how well this actually turns up on camera. Okay, so here are the rubies that I've been able to make. As you can see, the brightness and color really depends on how much chromium you put into the mix. Now this is, I think, about 4% chromium, and this is really on the higher limit of what actually is a ruby. So this doesn't actually fluoresce that much. But on the other hand, we've got some really bright rubies, as you can see here. That's a really bright pink. Um, and this one is a bit, little bit darker. And in my experience, it's um, the brighter ones, so the really bright pink ones that fluoresce the most. And um, actually, the smaller they are, the, the brighter they fluoresce, in my experience. I'm, I'm not sure why that is, maybe uh, because the bigger ones need more heat and then more of the chromium sublimates away or, I don't know, boils off. I'm not sure, but the smaller ones really uh, fluoresce more. So this one really looks nice, but it doesn't fluoresce that much. Now, these are really, really hard. Um, they're, they're pretty brittle, so if you hit them with a hammer, actually, done that before with this one and they they just break apart you know they're really brittle like glass and as you can see I think I made this one with quite a high current so there are quite a lot of bubbles in there and I'm not sure how to get rid of these I think in different process like the uh, venue process is a better um, way to do it and I might actually build a machine to try and do this, but no, it's a lot of work. Um, yeah, but these these are really really hard. I've got some some glass here. If you 
I can actually scratch the glass really easily with this. Uh, I think you can see this, yeah. So you can actually actually scratch glass really, really easily with this. And that's because they are basically corundum. And corundum is, um, I mean, it's uh, aluminum oxide, corundum. And corundum is on a most hardness of 9, um, with diamond being 10 and I think quartz being 0, something like this. So this is really, really hard. One of the, the hardest minerals that you can actually get. Only diamond and a f very select few other min minerals are as hard as this stuff. Now, some of you might actually ask themselves whether these rubies are of any kind of value or you know, whether you could actually make some kind of living doing this. No, you cannot. These, uh, these rubies are like... The, the poorest quality uh, rubies you can probably get. They are real rubies, but um, you wouldn't be able to make a ring out of this. Or, I mean, you could probably put this in a, in a ring, but no one would probably buy this. Um, so, I mean, if you think about it, if it is so easy to make these rubies yourself, they're not going to be very uh, valuable. Um, another interesting side note is, yes, you can actually cut these, um, but you will need some diamond dremel bits. I've actually tried this myself and I was successful in, in cutting these, so you can actually cut these. All right, that's it. Thank you for watching and um, let me know if you tried this stuff and how well your rubies turned out. Thank you for watching and see ya.